we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, now my next guest tonight is a political and media analyst for ABC News. He also just wrote this book, The People's Choice. Please welcome back to our program, Jeff Greenfield. <laughs> You know, I have never seen you without a tie. That's I've why never I once... You, this is shocking. I wrote the novel so I didn't have to wear a tie, because novelists don't have to wear ties. <laughs> You've got to get a pipe now or if something. If I write a... And a dog. Yeah. And if I write a screenplay, I'm coming back in T-shirts and uh, cut-off shorts. <laughs> and I don't know... It, it's just Hollywood, a long slide for you, isn't Hollywood, it? In Hollywood, the richer you are, the, the worse you dress. Steven Spielberg dresses like, a, like one of your panhandlers. And, you know, out-of-work actors put on suits. So, <laughs> here I am. It's a great thing about America. It's, it was to make this country great. Absolutely. God bless us. All right. Well, let's talk about the book, The People's Choice. Now, in, in brief summary, am I correct? This is really about what could go wrong in presidential politics. It's real simple. We just elect the president. Mm -hmm. He decides to celebrate by getting on a horse for the, for the photographers. Mm -hmm. The horse and he have a disagreement, mm -hmm. which results in him being thrown from a horse to his death. And then in a leap of imagination, I conjured up a vice president that people think is not up to the job of president. Mm -hmm. Where I came up with this, it's just my imagination. <laughs> How do you do it? Uh, I don't know. Just one of those wild, creative things. Mm -hmm. Whereupon the electors, remember those people you studied in high school for one day, the people that really elect the president? The Electoral College, right. you're saying. Which yes. most people think is in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you mean they're not? You know, All right. I actually once interviewed somebody. I said, do you know anything about the Electoral College? And they said, no, we're from out of town. <laughs> is that true, really? Uh, it's on tape. <laughs> yeah. So in my scenario, the electors decide we're not going to put this guy in. We're going to pick our own president. Whereupon... People like me go crazy. Okay. This is really about how, how, how the entire political system has what I hope is a funny, nervous breakdown over this. Now, you're saying this is all very possible, oh, is that right? Possible. You're saying that our process right now is, is always skating on the edge of disaster, absolutely. and it's never quite fallen apart, but it could at any time. In 1976, we came, well, I can't measure it exactly, that close to having the guy that lost the real vote, Jerry Ford, get elected president with the electoral vote. It almost happened. You mean so that what you're saying is that it's very possible that sometime in the future or near future, someone will win the popular vote and lose the White House. It's happened. It and happened. lose the, the most, more people in America will vote for him than anyone else, but he will not go to the White House. It happened three times in the 19th century, and someday it's going to happen, and the entire country is going to wake up and go, what? What? You're telling us the guy that got the most votes isn't president? That absolutely could happen. Mm -hmm. We could have a situation where nobody's elected president. I think people would like that. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think people, people would go for that. I mean, I and the more I think of it, the more I realize that having a loser in the White House might not be as original an idea as I first thought. <laughs> but I'm talking about a real one. All right. Well, let's talk about, I mean, for example, uh, you also think it's possible that someone could come along uh, and, and, and pull away enough votes from everyone else that, say like a Colin Powell. Like a Colin Powell? You think Colin Powell could actually do it. He could actually come along and pull enough votes from everywhere else where no one's a clear winner. Yeah, if he ran as an independent for president in one of few states... And then Clinton and, I don't know, Bob Dole or whoever, mm -hmm. split the rest, and nobody has a majority. We wake up Election Day, and we have no idea who the president is, because it goes into the House of Representatives under rules that are completely incomprehensible. And that would really happen. Oh, it's happened in the past, and I, I absolutely think it's going to happen one day. The law of averages is going to just jump up and bite us in an extremely unpleasant place one day. <laughs> okay, elaborate on that. No, uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, why don't we, do you think there's a time coming up when we're just going to get rid of the Electoral College completely? When this thing blows up in our face and mm -hmm. we sit there with all the shards of this machinery around us, then we will probably abolish it. But it's going to take, it's going to take a full-blown disaster. But what's going to replace it then? Just straight popular vote? I think so. I think, I th because I think most of us go through, understandably, go through the system and don't realize we don't really pick the president. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter usually. It's, just, it's like a 200-year-old piece of machinery somewhere in your house that someday is going to blow up and destroy everything. Uh, and, and then we'll fix it. You're a happy guy. <laughs> You're a, this is very pleasant. Well, yeah. actually, you know, I had a choice. I could have written a very sober warning. Mm -hmm. Or I could have written what I think of as the Three Stooges Meet the Founding Fathers, which was <laughs> much, much more fun. Uh -huh. And I got a chance to make a lot of fun of people like me. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk about people like you. Okay. You are a... Uh, you, you analyze the media. That's really your job, is to analyze mm -hmm. the media. There is a perception in this country that a lot of people have that the media makes too much out of something mm -hmm. and drives the public crazy, that they're out of touch with the public, that they, they seize on something and make too big a deal out of it. Do you think that's true? A lot of times, sure. Um, I think in politics we can pick, you know, someday we're going to find out that a guy running for president returned a library book three weeks late, and it's going to be library gate. 
right. or Dewey Decimal Gate. And then there'll be questions about, well, this really throws light on his judgment. How can we trust a man as president if he can't get a book back on time? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we do that. I think there are a lot of people who actually watch people uh, get elected president or in the process, and they think, I couldn't go through that system. I mean, they would find something out about that, yeah you know you, I think everybody thinks that so there's something about my past absolutely. that you know I mean that it doesn't that big a deal but but if in the right hands or the wrong hands it could be really embarrassing yeah. yeah I mean for example if you were running for president is there anything in your past that that would get in the way seriously well I don't know how to tell you this but I was a Melrose Place addict <laughs> I, I would watch that show. I blame my son, uh -huh. who turned uh -huh. me on to the show. And I would watch it. I would see the worst actors in the Western Hemisphere week after week. Uh, that guy. Oh, yes, come on. That guy. That guy, Billy. I think you should leave. Um, I've never been so unhappy in all my life. I've never been so excited in all my life. I would watch this. I, I could never tell one Who's person. That? Billy. Oh. I oh, could Billy. never tell one from the other. Oh, that kind of was Billy. Yeah. And I would sit there and I, I couldn't turn around. I think that would be enough probably to keep me out of the White that House. That would keep you out? Yeah. Uh, but I, have, I've, I am not watching Central Park West because as a New Yorker, I will not watch a show where there are more Gentiles in the cast of Central Park West than live on Central Park West. <laughs> uh, this is not the Central Park West that I... Fair enough! So. But yeah, I... <laughs> I have an addiction to bad TV. That should be enough to keep me out of the White House. Yeah, that and that quip right there. Yeah, okay. Well, The People's Choice uh, by Jeff Greenfield is out there. It's, it's a okay. cautionary tale. It is that. Thank you very much for a coming. A pleasure. Good to have you here, okay. Jeff. Good to you, everybody. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. See you in a second. Our show for the night. I do want to thank my guest Jeff Greenfield. Thank you very much for coming by. I also want to thank Jeff Stilson for being so funny. Thank you very much, Jeff. My thanks to Robin Leach for being here. Of course, Andy Rick there, the Max Weinberg Seven. Stay tuned for Friday night. Good night, everybody. Take care.